So one of the things we love doing on Brewpig is drones. Um, we find them incredibly fun and we love the footage that we get out of them. We're actually looking at doing an upgrade on our drone. So we use a Parrot Bebop 2 and we're looking to upgrade to a different version. Um, and we're going to use the Parrot for more of the riskiest stuff um, now that we can, now that we're going to have a second drone. So uh, Ryan's just showing Jess how to um, set it up and how to fly it. So yeah, this could be quite fun. Um, turn the controller on here. <laughs> Oh well. Like a kid with a new toy. That's awesome. First thing in the morning, we're up on the wheelhouse roof. Um, we've lifted the, um, the the radar mast up. So the next step is we're going to cut these red um, bars off. So these are just something that I created a couple of years ago, um, just basically to hold a Wi-Fi aerial so we have some internet. Um, so I've got to pull the insulation out from on the inside of the wheelhouse roof. Um, that was all uh, temporarily sitting in there um, when Tim made it all recently. So we've got to pull that out so we can weld onto the roof. We've got to take all the cabling and everything for the aerial um, that sits on the top of these bars out. Um, so basically a cable runs all the way down this rear um, beam. So I've got to pull all of that out and then I've got to slice those uh, those red bars off the roof. Then I've got to um, essentially flap her up around where we're going to weld so it's nice clean steel. Um, and then weld in a few fittings so we can get all of our wires and so on through for the radar and the aerials and so on. Um, and then yeah, position the, uh, position the radar mast. We've also got a couple of drums, Let's see if we can tip it over and show you, you can see a couple of 44 gallon drums over the back. So um, like when we built it, we basically sit the wings on top of those drums and it gives us the perfect height to, to have everything sort of level and ready to go. Um, and then we can sort of fine tune with little little shims and things like that. Um, but yeah, they, they make life pretty easy having those up here. So we got all of those up yesterday as well. So yeah, we'll get stuck into it and uh, we'll start putting this um, radar mast together. Right, it's up in the wheelhouse, we've got uh, the insulation Tim put in. Um, they're really, really tight. So when we, um, when all of these were built, we basically did it so that they're as tight as possible to remove any air gaps, um, which is great for insulation and a real pain if you're trying to get them back out again. So um, currently I'm trying to pull them out without destroying the polystyrene. If I have to, I'll break them and we'll just make some new ones. Um, but I basically just need to take panels out of the central area here so that we can weld the radar mast um, down onto that area and we're not going to set fire to all our insulation. So uh, yeah, see if we can get them out without ruining them. insulation together so I'm kind of learning how he constructed it while I'm deconstructing it and um, he's done he's done exactly the right thing like inside all of these ribs he's basically filled them up with polystyrene as well so there's no like, these are right angle steel so there's like no air gaps anywhere he's basically just completely sealed everything so I didn't realize he'd done that um, but it's pretty cool to see 
Kudos, Tim, if you're watching. Sorry, had to kill two panels. <laughs> Gives you an idea of how tight they are in there, which is brilliant. All right. So this cable is basically the, the aerial for one of our, well, one, it's the cable off one of our Wi-Fi aerials, of which there will eventually be two. Um, yeah, I think it's about three or four meters long, something like that, but I need to basically pull this out of the whole system so that I can cut those poles off, because I need to use this again, because it's a really decent cable. Right, let's rip that top end off. Okay, so the plan is, so I've got um, some uh, galvanized steel. I'm using galvanized so that it's easy to, to deal with in terms of painting and so on. I know it's not gonna rust too much on the inside. Um, so down here, I'll spin around and show you. So down here, we've marked it out, um, basically, and ground it out with the, the grinder so we've got nice, clean steel to weld to. We're gonna plasma in a hole, and then that there will get welded in. Um, the reason I'm doing such a big hole is basically so that I'll never have to worry about you know difficulty getting cabling and so on up into the radar mast um, so I want to make sure my thought was originally maybe even do two like do one down the back and one up the front I probably don't need to go to that extent I think we have no issue with that I think it's about a three inch pipe um, so yeah we have no issue with with cables it's not the cable that's the main issue that I'm thinking about it's actually more the plugs um, some of these radars have some quite chunky sort of plugs they have some of them have up to 20 wires um, so yeah, it's mainly the plugs that I'm sort of thinking about. That's why I'm giving myself so much room. Um, yeah, so let's get into it and start getting this welded on. So this little hole up here is where the, um, the pipe is gonna be coming through. So it'll be about here somewhere in the roof. Um, so what we need to do is start making some protection. So we're gonna plasma from the top down. So we're gonna have lots of stuff like sparks and rubbish and whatever coming through downwards. So we're gonna put some, um, some steel across here um, I've just got a piece of stainless steel, thin stainless we're going to use, just clamp it up to the roof and that allows us to sort of protect anything below here um, and then we're also going to tape all of that in so that no smells and stuff uh, go through the boat for the night. So normally all of the welding on brew peg is done with MIG, um, for, the, for the people that aren't welders watching this, um, this is an arc welding, stick welding and um, MIG needs a shield of gas like argon or CO2 or some other inert gas generally or mixtures of a whole bunch of inert gases um, and what that does is it stops any nitrogen getting into the weld with arc welding, the beauty of arc welding is um, this, there's a coating on, there's a steel rod with a coating on the outside um, and it basically does the same thing and the beauty of arc welding is you can weld when it's quite windy whereas with MIG welding and TIG welding it's quite difficult when it gets a bit windy it's really quite difficult to get a good, good weld going on um, so it is quite quite breezy up on the top of the wheelhouse here, that's why I'm uh, using my, my stick welder. And because um, my MIG welder is aptly named Nugget, it's about 190 bloody kgs. Well, feel like that when you lift it. So given that I haven't properly arc welded for about probably 10 years, um, it's not the best weld in the world certainly do better with my MIG welder but um, yeah I'm, I'm pretty happy with that seems to come up all right and remember that this is just a pipe to guide wires so it doesn't have to really do anything other than well guide wires
so she's holding her own weight so the plan is at the moment it is it's welded in you can sort of see those welds all the way around the bottom there um, so that's just a single weld that goes right the way around um, it's an arc weld so you can sort of see the quality of it there um, it'll do for now it's not the best weld in the world but it'll it'll be all right for now what my plan is is once I've got my MIG welder up here I can't physically get it up here by myself so once I've got my MIG welder up once uh, Ryan comes up I'll run a number of beads around just like what I've done up here if I show you this just like what we did here so if you remember we ran a couple of beads so there's one weld in the center and then one either side of it that uh, you end up with a really really strong join it's exactly the same thing I'm going to do down here so there were multiple beads around this when we're finished um, and then I'm also currently I, I, I think this is certified as bay cruiser safe but this needs to be southern ocean safe so we're going to be putting some bars that go from the back on uh, down on each side on a 45 so it'll give it a huge amount of um, triangulation and rigidity so that's the plan to make this um, as solid as we can get it all right so my braces are all welded in um, they're certainly not going to win any uh, pretty weld awards but they're not going to come off so that's the main bit um, I'm just going to go through now and clean up a lot of the splatter um, with arc welding if you haven't done it before you get quite a lot of splatter compared to MIG welding which is what I normally do on here um, so yeah I'm pretty happy with it it's not going to go anywhere um, which is the main thing it was strong enough before I put these bars on um, I can sit on one of these wings without it even like wobbling or doing anything so it was, I was pretty happy with that and then put these bars on it's going to have plenty of strength so um, yeah I may I've, I've been thinking about it I may actually chuck a couple of um, bars coming down right at the front of the radar mast as well just to stop any sort of sideways wobble um, I don't know if that's going to be an issue but I'll just if I have to I'll do it later um, but yeah just a thought that I had of maybe I needed to think about something like that because it does stick out quite a way it's, it's almost a meter that it sticks out the front um, because the the, um, the the array on the radar is nearly six feet long so it's, it's a huge radar um, that, that can be mounted here um, so yeah yeah we'll get into it so we've had a few days of uh, rust and so on happening on this thing so we sandblasted it and then we normally leave it a couple of days just so that it gets a nice um, film of rust there's a very specific reason we do this we covered it in our um, dealing with a rusty boat episode so if you check out I think it's on that side there if you check out the link um, for our video for dealing with a rusty boat we use this stuff here so it's basically it doesn't really matter what brand you use we just happen to use this because it's cheap and it's at the store that we get it from but um, essentially if you have steel that you need to deal with rust look for a rust converter that has a high phosphoric acid content because the phosphoric acid turns it from iron oxide into iron phosphate I think it is um, but basically it chemically bonds to the rust so it gives you a, it, it's really really um, uh, viscous so it gets right into the um, into the nooks and crannies and really seals out the oxygen it's a fantastic way of preventing rust going forward and then you paint over it and, you know just as per normal afterwards so you're etching and whether it be two pack or single pack, you can put water based or oil based over top of this stuff, um, or epoxies, or like it's a really hardy product. So, um, yeah, great, great first step when you're dealing with mild steel. Right as the sun went down, just got the job done. Dusk's pretty cool around here, you can see some neat things. So there's a, a sugar cane burn off happening in that side. And if you spin around, there's a massive burn off happening over there. All of that cloud cover all the way along there is that same burn off. So back up on top of the wheelhouse, we've got our radar mast here. So today I'm gonna have a go at painting the inside of the radar mast. Um, and then we'll obviously finish up the last um, edge coats that have to go over the outside and then we're ready for our top coat. So inside our mast, um, I'm not too stressed about getting the front and the back painted because they're galvanised, but the sides are still mild steel. So you, yeah, we sandblasted those, but we um, now need to go through and paint them. So, I need a long stick. So, I'm about to paint the second coat of, um, of 
of etch around the radar mast. Um, but the first coat and the second coat are obviously going to be basically I almost identical colours. So um, I have a trick that I use so that I can make sure that I uh, don't miss any bits for the second coat. Is I put a tiny bit of top coat in and just mix it in and all it does is basically discolour the second coat slightly. Um, it makes it incredibly easy then to see exactly where I need to paint. I'm really not worried if I get um, paint on the roof up here. As you can see it's covered in all sorts of rubbish because um, this whole area is going to be sandblasted. Um, so we're going to re re-blast the weld um, that holds the uh, radar mast to the to the roof. Um, so yeah, that's why I haven't really bothered painting that well because it's all going to be ripped off anyway. So um, yeah, it's uh, in case you're wondering, there's garbage everywhere. We're not really that stressed because it's going to be sorted. Still burn for